one. So January 16, 1893. Two years La later. Yeah, two years later. Lauren Thurston, who was the grandson of the missionaries, um, I have to say that because it's true, organized insurgents into a committee of safety. That's what they call themselves, a oh, committee of safety. safety. Yeah, who planned for the ultimate takeover of the government and to secure annexation to the United States. This was their plans. This is what they sought to accomplish. They sought support from the U.S. Minister John L. Stevens. Okay, he is a U.S. Minister, or he's an, uh, you know, a government official in that capacity. They went to him and said, hey, God, you know, John, can you help us? And he said, absolutely. To order the landing, John Stevens was, he was the guy that ordered the landing of the U.S. troops. These were Marines that came over on the USS Boston in Honolulu Harbor. He ordered them to come in. Okay? Well, I want to just remind everybody that at this time, Hawaii is a nation state Correct. recognized by the, the world. The, na the family of nations. The family of nations yeah. at this time that this happens. Yeah, so, go ahead. exactly. So, um, so anyway, he, he's, he's the guy that does that. And so the USS Boston is in Honolulu Harbor and all of the troops are off the, uh, the ship and they march to Iolani Palace, which isn't that far away. And they're, you know, full of weapons. They've got all kinds of weapons. And so therefore, they're marching over to the palace to show a force, you know, hey, we're powerful, we got the guns. And so um, th they, said they give the reason, the reason was that these insurgents, where they were preparing for the annexation of the Hawaiian Islands to the United States by a voluntary treaty of session. I mean, that's very laughable. What does that mean? Well, a voluntary treaty of session, I any country, every country has the right to do that. If they want to hand over their sovereignty, uh, if, if, you know, if I, if I am Japan and I want to hand over my sovere sovereignty, to the United States, you're the United States, we can do that. We have to do a plebiscite, a voting process, and there are criteria that has to be met according to Amer according oh, to US yeah, I get it. constitutional law. But you gotta meet the, the laws or the criteria mm -hmm. to even bring for the United States. I, I use the United States purposely because in the United States there's criteria in order to bring a country into their union. And one of the criteria is you have to have a common border. Oh, check that out. There's no common I border. Wonder why. <laughs> with Alaska or Hawaii. We don't have borders. Yeah, <laughs> we're across the ocean. Uh, so you have to have a two-thirds vote of the total population. So when you're doing just handing over your sovereignty, you have to have two-thirds vote from your total population base. And so, you know, you've got all of these things. But for the United States specifically, in order to bring a country into their union, they have to follow, there, there are criteria, but they don't follow it anymore. Let's just put it that way. Whatever the criteria w was once upon a time, for good reasons too, they're not following it anymore. So, um, so for, the, for the Hawaiian Islands, what happened is, this is what Lauren Thurston started to do. They brought the force, you know, the guns, because they can't do anything without weapons, right? So they bring them. So on January 17th, which is the date, 1893, the group declared themselves the provisional government with Sanford Doe as its first president or as its president, the queen was vested with the execution of Hawaiian law. It was her duty to ensure that the insurgents be apprehended by the police for committing the crime of treason. Okay, she, she has to do all of this. So however, under threat of war, under the threat of war, by the presence of U.S. troops, who were ordered by the U.S. diplomat John L. Stevens to protect the insurgents, the police force headed by Marshal Charles Wilson could not apprehend the insurgents without bloodshed. So later, the Queen made the following assignment of executive power under, uh, under Rhodes called, it's called the Lili'o Okalani Assignment. And this is what it is, and let me read that, because I think this is very important. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I, Lili'u Okalani. Let's our picture again. Yeah. I, Lili'u Okalani, by the grace of God and under the constitution of the kingdom, Queen, do hereby solemnly protest any 
and all acts done against myself and the constitutional government of the Hawaiian Kingdom by certain persons claiming to have established a provisional government of and for his kingdom that I yield to the superior force of the United States of America whose minister plenipotentiary his excellence John L. Stevens has caused United States troops to be landed at Honolulu and declare that he would support the said provisional government now to avoid any collision of armed forces and perhaps loss of life I do under this protest and impelled by said force yield my authority until such time as the government of the United States shall upon the facts being presented to it undo the act of its representatives and reinstate me in the authority which I claim as the constitutional sovereign of the Hawaiian Islands Queen Lili'u Okalani these are her words she believed in God she believed the teachings of the missionaries who came over in 1820 from New England she believed in Jesus Christ. She believed in the goodness of men. And that's all she asked for. That's all she was asking. For them to do the right things, the godly things, the lawful things. That's all she asked for. And so from 1893 to 2023, nothing has been corrected. But I can share with you um, Public law. Let me share the public law. You want to share this one? Oh, yeah. Let me just uh, share this This one. part's interesting, you guys. Check this out. Uh, this was a message by President Grover Cleveland. He's an interesting president. And he was in office back in eight... He was in office. He actually won the election against Benjamin Harrison. I believe he was the president prior, Benjamin Harrison. And they... When I, he went up against the incumbent and he won the election and he held office for one term. So he, when he came into office, these insurgents had brought to, to the White House, Capitol Hill, they wanted to do the annexation treaty. So when they brought the treaty to President Grover Cleveland, he looked at it and he knew the status of the Hawaiian Kingdom being an independent nation state. So he was looking at the request and he was going, How, the Hawaiian kingdom is an independent nation state. What is this about? You know, he couldn't figure that one out. So he decided to send a representative and the representative was from the state of Tennessee, Blount, B-L-O-U-N-T. His name was Blount. Um, I can, I've got his full name some, somewhere, but he went over to investigate and sent back his report to President Gro Grover Cleveland. So when he gets, when Cleveland gets it, he goes and says, you know, he says, you know, these considerations might not of themselves call for interference with the completion of a treaty entered upon by a previous administration, but it appeared from the documents accompanying the treaty when submitted to the Senate, because the annexation treaty must go through the U.S. Senate, okay? It's the senators that approve an annexation treaty, okay? So, and then he... This is words from President Grover Cleveland, not from Calais. <laughs> and he said that the ownership of Hawaii was tendered to us by a provisional government set up to succeed the constitutional ruler of the islands who had been dethroned and it did not appear that such provisional government had the sanction of either popular revolution or suffrage. In other words, he found that the insurgents made up, what, 2,000 people. What's the percentage of that compared to the total population? And in addition to the resistance uh, against this annexation, because the insurgents brought, brought it up to Washington about four times, and all four times it was, you know, the, the senators absolutely said no. So the only thing that they accomplished by going to Washington, D.C. for anything sounding like an annexation treaty is called the Newlands Resolution. 
that's the name of, I guess, a senator or some. But it's a new lens resolution, which is not a treaty. A resolution is where the House and the, uh, the, the Senate and the House and the President, they all together jointly sign. And the question in 18, I forgot the year of that resolution, 1897, I think. The question on that resolution is, should the United States annex the Hawaiian Islands? And the question was, yeah, yeah, we should. So they signed this resolution, which is a U.S. law that is only legal and lawful and can operate within the borders of the United States. It cannot operate outside the borders of any country or the United States since it's a U.S. law. Because if they could annex the Hawaiian Islands like they claimed they did, then they could do the same to any country on the, on the planet. They don't need wars. You just need a resolution. You just need a U.S. resolution. That's what it is because that's what they use. It's called the New Lens Resolution. It's very thick. It's, go to your library, your law libraries. You'll find it over there. And it's signed. The dates they signed, who signed it. But it's a U.S. joint resolution. It has, it's not a, a, a treaty of annexation. N there's none that will ever existed back then or today. So who was the president after Cleveland? That William that McKinley became so the president. Yeah, he was a he was a more pro expansionist, so he was more of a president that was helping. So you see, this shows you that each time that you have a president in office, you have to look at that person. What is that person doing? I mean, is he is he a good person? Is he doing good for the country and the people, or he's not? And you you just have to um, scrutinize, evaluate, and hold that person accountable. Oh man, yeah.